Lord God the Father, just ask you to open up your words, Lord God. Help us to preach the gospel, Lord God. And we understand that the laws of the state, and we understand what you tell us, Lord God, that you just keep that door open and bless us, Lord God, and help us to grow in your word. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. All right, John chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse... Oh, we're out of baptism. Don't worry about that no more. Um, we're going to pick up verse 29. I'm going to read down to 36. And the next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin, singular, of the world. Every sin. It's sin put into one bucket. This is he whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And we all did this. I, I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. We're done with baptism. Don't worry about that. And John bared record saying, I saw the Spirit descending upon... I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and abode upon him. And I knew him not, but that... But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. So even though Jesus went in the water, he was baptized with the Holy Ghost, and not a fire. That was done, I think, last week or the week before. I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after John stood, two of his disciples. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And we saw that in verse 29. So John 135 is the next day. Jesus comes back and John continues. First day he said, that's the Lamb of God. The second day he says, it's the Lamb of God. And that expression is very important to the Jewish people. That's who we're talking about. I'm not talking about church. We're talking about the, Jew, the, the, the Jewish people. So that Lamb of God, uh, Exodus chapter 12. And to remember this verse, or chapter, it's the whole chapter. The Passover. Remember Israel. Twelve is the number of Israel. And in Exodus 12, the next great event after Exodus 12 is na the nation of Israel being established coming out the Exodus out of Egypt. When Israel puts the blood of the Lamb on the doors and they come out, after Egypt says, get out of here, we're gone. Israel is now official nation. But that Lamb of God, the Passover, verse, chapter 12, verse, oh, where do we want? Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you, would be our January. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, not Gentiles, not no church, saying the tenth day of the month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. There it is. According to the house of their fathers, a land for a house. Alright, you got a house, you're Jewish, every man in that house gets one lamb. If thy household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto the house take it according to the number of the soul. Every man according to the eating shall make your count for the lamb. We go on from a lamb to the lamb. You know what you're supposed to do after you get a lamb and he becomes the lamb? 
You're supposed to take your lamb to your neighbor's house. That's in the Old Testament. The first people you're supposed to... Listen, I was saved on April 25th, April 26th. The first person I told about Jesus Christ in hell was my dad. I went right next to my dad. I went to my parents. You know, there are people who want to be missionaries in China and Japan and Africa, but they've never been a missionary to their neighbor next door. My neighbors around me know about Jesus. So we have a lamb, done lamb. Verse 5. Your lamb. You know how many lambs were sacrificed that day? For every house? And it's a lamb. It's the lamb. It's your lamb. It doesn't say plural lambs. Why? Because Exodus 12 is pointing us to John the Baptist saying, Behold the Lamb of God. And by the time we get to Revelation with this Lamb. It's not about the, the, the lambs we're talking about here. It's about that Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. He says, Your Lamb shall be without blemish, Jesus Christ without sin. The male of the first year, Jesus was the only begotten of God. You shall take it out from the sheep and from the goat. Jesus Christ lived amongst the sheep and the goats. Israel and the Gentiles. And the, the quote unquote saved and the quote unquote lost. And ye shall keep it up unto the fourteenth day of the same month. The, John talks about the last and final week of Jesus. This is what we're looking at right here. This is where they examine Jesus like they examine that lamb. And before the 14th day of the first month of Abed, this is what the month is called, that lamb, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to put that lamb under scrutiny. You're supposed to examine that lamb, make sure that lamb was perfect. Make sure there's no disease, no spots. That last final day in, in Israel, man, they examined Jesus. Pilate examined Jesus. Pilate says, I find no fault in this man. Herod says, there's no fault with this man. Pilate's wife said, this man is just. Judas went to the priest and said, I am in the, innocent, the, in, the innocent blood. This all comes back to this night, the Passover lamb. Verse 6, you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it. Jesus Christ died on Abed 14 at 6 p.m. at the mouth of the children of Israel's name crucified. There it is. You know the date of Jesus' birth. I mean, just let me take that back. I don't want to misquote the Bible now. You know the date of, the, of Jesus' death. You don't know the date of his birthday. So I can have some assumptions. Never mind the birthday of Jesus. Abed 14. At 6 p.m., Jesus Christ would cry, It is finished, and gave up the ghost. The Lamb of God. Shall kill it in the evening. Now that evening is 6 p.m. in the Bible, for the Jewish time. And shall take up the blood and strike it in the two side poles, one thief on the right and one thief on the left, and on the upper door poles, that's Jesus, wherein they shall eat it. You shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire, type of hell, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall you eat it. So, there's the Passover lamb. That's Jesus Christ. That's one of the two lambs we're going to look at that John the Baptist meant, there, there behold, the Lamb of God. That's one place. Genesis 22, 7. This is the other place. And I have found out that Genesis 22 has been perverted. Not by modern, well, maybe modern Bibles. Let me say, say I haven't checked modern Bibles. Genesis 22 has been perverted by the Muslims. And I had a Muslim tell me. I'll tell you in a moment. But lamb shows up 107 times in the Bible in 100 verses. 
Now, we're not going to read the whole Genesis 22, though we should. But people say Genesis 22 is Calvary of the Old Testament. Um, let's see. Verse 3, at the end of verse 3 of 22, it said, rose up and went to the place which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. That place is Calvary. Where, we're, well, where we are in Genesis 22 is where Jesus Christ is going to be crucified. Outside the gates of Jerusalem. This is the same spot that David buys. Abraham's at the spot and he takes off with his son up a hill. Abraham and Isaac walk out of what would be Jerusalem and walk up the hill where Jesus Christ would be crucified. And Hebrews said he was crucified outside the gate. Abraham pictures God the Father. Isaac pictures Jesus Christ. The Muslims say Abraham and Ishmael. It's not Ishmael. The Muslims pervert Genesis 22 to their religion. God says, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. So verse number 7 of 22. And they're on their way up to be... Uh, Isaac's going to be sacrificed. Isaac spoke to Abraham's father and said, My father. He said, Here am I, my son. Behold the fire and the wood cross. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Mark, if you're ever going to mark your Bible, Mark verse 8. Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God's going to give himself as the lamb. And we've got to pick on the Jehovah Witnesses because they're wrong. Because Jesus Christ is God. And when John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God, he's talking about the land that Abraham said God will provide. That's God right there, gentlemen. The Passover land, that's God. Remember, Abraham and Moses are two big figures the men of Israel in Jesus' time. Abraham. We're of the seed of Abraham. We're of Moses' seed. And they would not mistakenly take the passage back to what we just read now. Behold the Lamb of God. If they missed it, they missed a lot. So, Exodus 13, 13, we look at the Lamb's. Or the lamb. And a lot of these times, these lambs are going to point to Jesus. With the Old Testament scriptures, now remember, that's all Paul had. That's all John had. That's all Apollos had. When they dealt with those Jews and they said, with the scriptures, they showed forth Jesus that he was the Messiah. They didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Exodus, Leviticus, I mean, Levit uh, how they, Romans, and all that. They didn't have that. In most cases, the verses we're going to look at and more, they, like we just looked at before, they're going to show them the scriptures and they're going to show them Jesus out of the very scriptures. Now, here's an exalting verse Exodus 13 13. 13, the Bible is rebellion. And the Bible speaks so clear. You've got to get a King James Bible. The first lean of an ass thou shalt redeem, buy back with a lamb. An ass is an unclean animal. If thou wilt not redeem it with the lamb, thou shalt break his neck. You're going to kill it. If you're not going to bring that lamb for that ass, kill the ass. And all the firstborn men of the, of the children shall thou redeem. You know what that ass pictures? It pictures you and me. 
before Calvary. I'm an, I was an unclean animal, and I needed a lamb to redeem. You know what the Bible says of a man who's not saved? You're an ass. There it is. Where did that expression come? When you call somebody an ass, Exodus 13, 13. What does that ass mean? I'm not just keep on saying it so I can perverse. No, that's what the Bible said. An ass needs a lamb. Redeem is to buy back. I had to, I had to be bought back because I was sold to sin. I was under the devil. And a great way to remember that verse is un, uh, not saved. We were in rebelling against God and we needed that Exodus 13, 13, rebelling, rebelling. If you're not redeemed by a lamb, you're to be dead. Dead in Christ, trespassing and sins. Alone in a world without hope, without God. Exodus 29 Exodus 29. When John said, Behold the Lamb of God, he said a mouthful. Now to us Gentiles, Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Wherever Mary would go, that lamb was sure to... What was the name of Jesus' mother? Mary. What was Jesus? The Lamb of God. His fleece was without sin, white as snow, as Jesus is on the mountain of transfiguration with Peter, James, and John, and Moses and Elijah. How many people know that nursery rhyme but can't relate it to Jesus Christ? Exodus 29, 39. Alright, here's a new, another Jewish law. One lamb thou shalt offer, well, verse 38. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, the brazen altar. Two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at even. 720 lambs will be offered throughout the whole Jewish year. One lamb at 6 in the morning, and at one lamb at 6 p.m. at night, every day. Every day. There was to be a lamb that would be killed and burned upon that brazen altar every day. 720 lambs a year, if they did what was right. Of all the animals in the world, God said, a lamb. Now, there's, oh, there's oxen, there's bullocks, there's goats, turtle doves, but a lamb. So when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, let's keep on looking at the law. Uh, Exodus 34, 20. They knew the law, they were supposed to know the law. Did they know who Jesus was? Yes, if they didn't, they didn't study their scriptures. Exodus 34, 20, By the first leaves of an ass, thou shalt redeem... Okay, I hear it again. If thou redeem him not, thou shalt break his neck. That's a barely very... That's twice in there. We are asses that need to be redeemed only by a lamb. Oh, I've been redeemed by a goat. Ain't good enough. I've been redeemed by a wafer. Ain't good enough. Gold is redeemed. No, you need a lamb. And if you don't have the lamb, you're dead. John chapter 3 says, we're not in condemnation already if we're lost. The Bible says you're in condemnation already. And you get out of that condemnation, John chapter 3, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. Leviticus 3 7. We're in the law. The Jews were to know the law. 
And we're to know what we we are to believe. As Christians, we ought to know why lamb? Well, I know we're not under the law, but shouldn't we know the scriptures? What the Bible says, Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them that you, it writes of me about life. I didn't quote that verse correctly. But Jesus said, go back to the scriptures, the only scriptures they have with the Old Testament, and in those scriptures you're going to find me. That's what we found so far. We found Jesus as a lamb, not a little white little animal. But animals that would be a type and a symbolic of to what Jesus would be on that cross one day. In uh, Leviticus 3.7 and offer a lamb for his offering, thou shalt offer it before the Lord. Thou shalt lay his hand upon the head of the offering, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron, his, Aaron shall sprinkle the blood round about the altar. This shall be offered as peace offerings. You want to make peace with God? I'll give God money. I ain't going to make peace with God. I'll give God one of my days out of the week. One hour of my whole entire week. I ain't going to make peace with God. you got to have that lamb. you got to have the lamb that was sacrificed by the children of Israel. Israel is the one that turned Jesus over to the Romans. And the Pilate says, what do you want me to do with him? I can set him free. Crucify him. So, chapter 4, Leviticus 4, 32. Now, you can't press a type all the way, but Leviticus 4, 32. If he bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring a female, well, we know Jesus is not a female, Without blemish, that means no sin. But a lamb is a sin offering that is without blemish. He shall lay his head, head, hand upon the head of the sin offering and so slay it. You know who killed that sin offering? The person that was offering that sin offering. You brought that lamb, you put your hands on the head of that lamb, and you killed that lamb for yourself. You know who Jesus Christ died for? He died for me. He died for you. He died for you. He died for you. Well, I'll have, I'll have godparents take care of me. Your godparents can't kill the lamb for you. I'll have my mother do it. Your mother can't do it. you got to kill that lamb. That's the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law, the law I can't do. Uh, that was chapter 4, verse, chapter 5, verse 6. This is a Jewish law. They are to know this law. He shall bring his trespass offering. I've trespassed against the Lord. I crossed them lines where I wasn't supposed to cross. Unto the Lord for his sin, which he has sinned. A female from the flock, a lamb, or a kid of the goats, for a sin offering. There's that lamb. A trespass offering and a sin offering. Have you trespassed against God? Have you sinned against God? You need a lamb. It says, or a goat, but I mean, we're talking about Jesus. You know, there were two other men that were crucified that afternoon. One man was saved. He's a sheep. The one in the middle was the shepherd. What was the other guy who died on the cross? He was a goat. That one that, that one that died on the cross that rejected God, religion, he's not going to save you. You need the one that was in the middle. 
Though there was blood on the left doorpost and there was blood on the right doorpost, it's the blood of the one that was above the doorpost. And Jesus says, I am the door. I am the shepherd. I am the way. I am the water of life. I am the light of the world. So I'm trying to get you to see with the law that when John said, Behold the Lamb of God, John said a mouthful. And we're going to lead our way to find out who this Lamb is. Believe me. And we'll use the Scriptures. Leviticus 9, verse 3. You notice how we're reading the Scriptures. We don't have a missal. I'm not giving you my opinion. You're able to write the Scripture down and check out the Scripture. We are using a King James only. I'm helping you with the verses, stretch out emphasis on a verse to help you see. But this is not my opinion. You know, as far as people with opinions, it's like armpits. Everybody's got a set of them and they stink. That's not the Word of God. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 3. Unto the children of Israel... He came unto his own, his own received him not. Remember that in John? And thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and a calf, and a lamb, both for the first year, and without blemish, without blemish, no sin, for a burnt offering. What was that? You take that, you take that lamb and you put him in the fire. You know, there are many people who are wrong who said, Jesus did not go into hell. Yes, he did. He went into hell. He deposited my sin and your sin, but my sin. He left them in hell. He preached to the people that were in hell, saying, hey, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. You're damned. Goodbye, see you later. Grabbed the keys of death and hell, walked across that gulf that Abraham said no man could walk across, but he already walked across a body of water. He walked across that gulf, and he said, hey, I'm looking for a thief who died on the cross. I said, today thou shalt be within paradise. And then all the graves of the Old Testament saints woke up. And, and when you see, when John went into glory, into heaven in Revelation, he said, I saw paradise. That lamb was to be put into the fire. That lamb, the, 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 the Passover lamb, it says, thou shalt not put no water on it. We didn't read that in Exodus 12. They should put no water in it. Jesus said on the cross, I thirst. And they didn't give them water. They gave them vinegar. Can you imagine? It's a very hot, humid day in Florida. And you've been out there doing work. And you're doing whatever you're doing. And you're out there three or four hours. And oh, you get in the house and you say, oh man, I am hot. I can, give me something to drink. And they give you a glass of vinegar. And you tell not what you wanted. You know, every time Jesus asked for water, he never got it. The creator of water never got what he wanted. Think about that. Leviticus 12. Now, here's another one you got to remember. Number 12. 12 means Gentile. I mean, excuse me, take that back. 12 meant uh, Israel. I messed up on that. Twelve tribes of Israel, twelve. And this is an interesting one. This is for your Catholic friends. Verse 6 through 8. And we'll have to go run over to Luke. Then we'll be back to Leviticus. But Leviticus 12, verse 6. When the days of her purifying fulfilled, she's had a baby. She's had a baby boy. And after she has a baby boy, according to verse 6, she's unclean. Okay? When the days are purifying are fulfilled, uh, two weeks. All right, so when the days are purifying for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of a first year for a burnt offering, a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering, under the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest. 
So here's a woman, she's just had a baby, a boy or girl. She's unclean. She's got to bring a sacrifice. She's got to bring a sin offering. See that? Sin offering. And the priest who shall offer it before the Lord, make atonement for her, the mother, the new mother. She shall be cleansed from the issue of blood. Uh, you know, any pregnancy has a lot of blood. This is a law for her that has born a male or female. If she's not able to bring a lamb, now that's important, she shall bring two turtles, that's two turtle doves, or two young pigeons. I don't know why God says pigeons. I mean, those are pathetic creatures. One for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. You're to bring two birds, turtle doves or a pigeon, one for a burnt offering, the other one for a sin offering. And the priest will make reconciliation for her. Now let's go over to Luke chapter 2. And let's blow the Catholics out of the water, shall we? Mm -hmm. Let's sink their battleship. Because they say Mary is sinless. But we know no good Catholic reads the scripture. You know, Catholics don't have a scripture. They have a missile. You know what missiles do? They kill people. I knew I grew up as a Catholic. And God, God got me out of it. Luke chapter 2, verse 22. And see if you do not recognize this, this being familiar. Luke 2, 22. When the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, Mary just had a baby. She had Jesus. They brought him to Jerusalem, the baby, Jesus, and presented him to the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. That's Jesus. And to offer a sacrifice to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a, pale, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigs. Did you recognize that? Do you recognize that in Leviticus 12? It said if she was not able to bring a lamb, she's to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. What was one of them birds to be for? A sin offering. The Pope is wrong. Now, it said in, in Leviticus 12, she's not able to bring a lamb. She can bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. You ever see Mary's pictures in Catholic? You ever see how beautiful she is and how rich she is in the clothing? She couldn't afford a lamb. She had to bring the next best offering. How could she be dressed richly if she had to bring the lesser offering of the birds? Mary was poor. But let me tell you something else. Where was Mary's lamb? Mary had a little lamb. Its leash was white as snow. Wherever Mary would go, that leash would follow her. So her lamb was in her arms. But he wasn't ready to be offered yet. So she had to bring the birds. 33 and a half years after that date, her lamb would be sacrificed on the cross. And guess who's at the foot of the cross as Jesus dying? His mother. So tell the Catholic, according to the Bible, King James, they're wrong. Sorry. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or go to hell. There's no purgatory. So how's that one? All right, back to Leviticus 14. Now, that was just a little side note. The Bible concludes, Mary concludes, she was a sinner. She obeyed, her and Joseph obeyed the law. One time they brought Jesus when they were supposed to, to Jerusalem. I think it was the Passover. I, I, and they lost Jesus. But they brought him to Jerusalem like they were supposed to. They obeyed the law. Leviticus 14, verse 12. Yeah, we're just looking at the lamb. And the priest shall take one he lamb and offer it for a trespass offering. Again, have you trespassed? 
There's a line in the ground. And God says, cross this line and you're in trouble. Cross this line and you're a sinner. Have you crossed that line? You were born to cross that line. And in sin did my mother conceive me. You need a lamb. You're the ass that needs a lamb. If not, break your neck. Which causes death. Isn't it funny how a lot of the movies will have their murder... A lot of times their death, the death of the person that was murdered with the neck being broken. That's kind of interesting. They get out of the Bible, they don't even know it. Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6 is be the last of the law. But what we're reading right now, what we read is the law. They were to know the law. John knew the law. Jesus knew the law. And that lamb, trespass offering, sin offering, God. Remember, Genesis is the law. Uh, number 614. He shall offer his offering to the Lord. Not to the man, not to a priest, not to a pope, not to a pastor, not to a... One of the lamb the first year without blemish. That sounds like Jesus to me. Without blemish for a burnt offering. Then you have a new lamb the first year without blemish for a sin offering. And then you have a ram without blemish for a peace offering. You've got a burnt offering, a sin offering, and a peace offering. That's all fit. There's not the, bu the blood of bulls and goats, Hebrews says, but by the blood of Jesus Christ has fulfilled all these animals. Aren't you glad that it's only by Jesus and we don't have to, okay, which animal got to bring to that? Mm. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is about the suffering Messiah. Now if you deal with a, a Jewish person he will say Isaiah 53 is the suffering Jew because of the Gentiles. Now I've had him say it to me. And I try to say, no, you're wrong. They, and I've read it to him. They can't. Isaiah 53 cannot point to the nation of Israel. Because the nation of Israel was not wounded for our transgression. But they would say the Gentiles had wounded them. But that's another time. Isaiah 53, 7. You know something interesting about Isaiah 53, 7? This is the same verse that the Ethiopian eunuch was reading in Acts chapter 8. When he asked Philip, who does this prophet speak of, of himself or another? And Philip came into the chariot and he expounded to the man, Jesus. Isaiah 53, 7. He oppressed that's Jesus. He was afflicted. That was Jesus. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. There's that lamb. Isaiah identifies. That lamb of God has come to take away the sin of the world. He's going to be heading for a slaughter. He's going to be heading for to be oppressed. He's going to be heading for affliction. Again, John 1.29, John 1.36, the Lamb of God. Acts 8.32. I'm going to show you what we just what we just read. Because I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to see it. I don't want you to see the scriptures. I'm not going to try to ever hide the scriptures from you. Acts 8.32. And you can write a note, Isaiah 53.7, next to this. If, if your Bible's got cross-references, it should already say Isaiah 53.7. The place of the scripture which he read was, he was slid as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before his shares, and he opened not his mouth. We just read that. There's that lamb. There's that lamb. 
First Peter 1 Peter 1.19. Let's go ask the first Pope. Mr. Pope, please tell us about Jesus. I mean, after all, you knew about Jesus. Uh, Mr. Pope, hello? Were you by the fireside warming your hands when you denied Jesus three times? See, the Catholics are wrong. And if Peter was the first pope, and he's not, I love it because I love to show them the scriptures. Jesus turns to Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> that gets him real upset. Then I turn around and say, well, the pope is your... If Peter's the first pope, and that's the first pope, then your church is built behind Satan. And then they really... That ruins their day. But anything with the Bible ruins people's day. Like they said, the farmer's market. The main problem they have with me is because I offended the people. Oh! <laughs> I'm not changing your diaper. You're old enough to do it yourself. So 1 Peter... See, people want me... I got sympathy. I tell you about Jesus. That's sympathy. 1 Peter 1.19... Ready? But the precious blood of Christ. You know about the blood of Christ? You know Acts 20:28 20, says that blood is God's blood? Peter, what do you guys say about that? With the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Peter knew the law. Didn't we, didn't we not read when we read about that lamb in the law? You had to bring a lamb without spot, without blemish. What's Peter saying? That lamb of God... He's sinless. That Lamb of God fulfilled the law. That Lamb would not have a spot. Jesus, you know, Jesus did not have a birthmark. No spot. You know, he didn't have a freckle. No spot. That's what Peter says. If that Lamb had a mark on that flesh, and you look between the flesh, that Lamb was no good to offer. We read that through the scriptures. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. Without spot, without blemish. Peter said, you know, those, you know those animals you were supposed to look at in the Old Testament? Yeah, it's Jesus. Try to get a Pope to say that. Because if the Pope were to say that, you would not to get into a closet with another priest and confess your sins to that priest wrongly. Come to the Lamb. Keep on moving on. All right, we're around the corner. Let's see what we got here. Revelation chapter 5. Now let's find out who that lamb is, shall we? Remember, remember a little while ago we went to the book of Revelation and we found out with the scriptures out of Revelation who we were looking for? Well, let's go find out who we're looking for now. Revelation. Chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, verse number 6. And I beheld, and lo, the midst of the throne, God's throne, and in the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a capital L lamb, as it had been slain, having seven eyes and seven and the seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Oh, there's, there's a lamb with a capital L. Remember all the capital letters we did in John chapter 1? Capital W in word, capital L in light. You know, we took forever to do that, and here we're back to a capital L. That's why we're going slow through John. We, we got all the time in the world that the rapture happens. And if the rapture happens... God will finish his Bible study in, in glory. You know? Verse 8. St. chapter 5, 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty-four elves fell down before the capital L Lamb. Having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Notice the beasts and the elders have the harps. Not us. So there's that capital L. Verse 12, same chapter. Say it with a loud voice. You know people say I'm too loud. Mm -hmm. They do. He's too loud. Oh, I match heaven. 
Maybe God called me for a reason with the big mouth. Be thankful you didn't have to live all these years with my mom and my big mouth. Say it with a loud burp. Worthy is the capital L lamb that was slain. It means he died. To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. So there was a land that is slain, and he's got power, he's got riches, he's got wisdom, he's got strength, he's got honor, he's got glory, he's got blessings. I don't think we're talking about a little animal. So, all right, that was um, verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, Heard I say, blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the capital L Lamb forever and ever. Creatures worship this Lamb. And he's on the throne. Now, if it was Peter, they would put a literal Lamb on the throne, but we're not talking about Peter. We're, cap we're talking about a capital L Lamb. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. 6 1. And I saw when the Lamb, capital L, opened one of the seals. Well, that's kind of interesting for an animal to open up seals. I guess we're not talking about an animal. Verse 16, chapter 6, verse 16. We're on our road to find out who the Lamb is. With the Bible. Verse 16, chapter 6, And said to the mountains, This is the wicked men, and to the rocks, Fallen us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of a lamb, capital L. You mean to tell me they're afraid of a little cute lamb that got upset? Really? You're a wimp. That little lamb that was born in Bethlehem grew up to be a lion. And he is angry. And he's not coming back as a baby no longer, my friend. Let's keep reading about that lamb. Chapter 7, verse 9. And I beheld, lo, great multitudes. No man could number. How many people are saved? Can't be numbered. All the nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Verse 10. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. That God is the Lamb, that Lamb is the God, and it's on the throne. Jehovah's Witnesses. Stop picking on them. I'm going to stop picking on them when they believe the Bible. Plain and simple, my friend. Uh, verse 14, chapter 7, verse 14. I said, Sir, thou knowest. He said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That sounds, that sounds very interesting. Peter says that Lamb was pure and clean. The blood. Acts 20, 28 says it's the blood. It says those are in the tribulation. Though they are under the law, they still need the blood of Jesus. There's that. That's chapter 7, verse 14. Verse, chapter 7, verse 17. Well, you know, you, you said before the The Lamb, capital L, which is the midst of the throne. That's Lamb is on the throne, in the midst of the throne. Just in case you didn't get it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. By the way, the only animals I see in heaven are horses. And they come out of heaven, and that's it. People think doggies are gone. Dogs and cats are unclean animals, according to the law. Anything that has a paw is unclean. Leviticus, I believe, the chapter. But Revelation chapter 12, I just upset a whole bunch of people. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood. How did you overcome? 
By the blood of what? By the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony. So we've already seen a couple verses now. Blood and Lamb. Lamb and blood. And John said as Jesus walking up, Behold the Lamb of God. Chapter 13, verse 8. Revelation 13, 8. And the day that dwelt upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So we got a lamb, we got blood, we got a, a, a lamb that is God. He has taken away our sins. Verse 11. Uh, Revelation, no, wait a minute. Revelation 13, 11. I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spanked as a dragon. That's the, that's the Antichrist. And notice that's a small L. The world has their lamb. He looks like a lamb, but he speaks as a dragon. Revelation chapter 12 says that dragon is the devil. Paul said there's another Jesus. Better be careful. Chapter 14, verse 1. Oh, here's a Jehovah Witnesses. And I look and lamb stood upon capital L, upon Mount Zion, with him 144,000 have their father's name written on their foreheads. You want to have fun with them? Jehovah Witness comes walking in. Oh, you're going to work with Jehovah Witness. Let me see your forehead. I don't see no name. Huh? I don't see no name on your forehead. Ask him. If they're the 144,000, I don't see no name. Plus, you know, Jehovah Witnesses are way over 144,000 now. That's another one that gets them all angry. I said, if you're in the millions and billions right now, what happened to the people after 144,001? And of course, after 144, after one, they had to change their doctrine. They were in big doo-doo. When they made census at one time, oh, we got 500,000. Uh -oh. We going over. Well, that is only 144,000 going to heaven. Yeah, that's how they get by. The other ones, they got some kind of paradise for them. They're, they're as slick as a snake. That's where they're from. Verse 4, 14, 4. These are they which are not defiled by a woman. You got a Jehovah Witness comes to your door. They're a woman. Have you been with a woman? That's, that's gross and it's an abomination. When a man comes to your door, I'm a Jehovah Witness. Are you married? Goes, yeah. Have you got children? Yeah. You've been defiled by a woman. Because 144,000, according to this verse, are virgins. Of course, they don't know that either. But a devout one, for they are virgin. Oh, okay, I got it. Now I understand. So ask a Jehovah Witness if they're a virgin. You had that right. That's why they hate me. These are they which follow the capital L Lamb wherever he goeth. All right. You want to have more fun? And come knock it. What you looking for? Where's the lamb? You ain't got no lamb. Whoa! You're at 144,000. You're not a virgin. And if you're a woman, you definitely don't fit. And you're not following the lamb. Who is God. I, I, I'm just trying to show you the scriptures here. But, I mean, these scriptures go for the tribulation period, not for the church age, but they're the ones who claim to be the 144,000. But, but there's that lamb. We're looking at the lamb. The little side trip there. They don't come to my house no more. I wish they did. I wish the Lord would give me another wife. To, I wish the Lord would give me another wife so they knock at the door and say, Honey, I'm Tracy to say, Go get him. <laughs> She could get. She tell me go get him. Then she get the, the video cord and record the whole thing. 
Verse 10, chapter 14. And shall, in the same shall drink of the wine and the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the capital L Lamb. Jesus said hell was made for the devils and the angels. Jesus was the creator of hell that the Jehovah Witnesses deny. But I'll leave them alone for now. A couple more verses and then we'll be done. Revelation chapter 15 verse 3. Revelation chapter 15, verse 3. And you would probably put, in uh, my handwriting, and so check, Exodus 15, if you want to put a note here. I hope that's 15, because I write terrible. X out of Revelation chapter 15, verse 3. Notice how this is the same chapter, 15, 15. And they, sang, they sing the song of Moses, that's Exodus 15, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Thou, capital K, King. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. So when they come to your house, <laughs> sing to me the song of the Lamb. What? <laughs> I've tried all this. <laughs> so you're not a virgin. You're over 144,000. You don't have no name on your forehead. You're not following the Lamb, and you don't know His song. You can get off my driveway. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is why John says, don't wish Him a good day, happy day, and don't invite Him in your house. Mm -hmm. right. By the way, when John says, when John says in, in Second Epistle, John, don't invite Him into your house, do you know what that house is? That is where they met as the church in people's houses. You know what John was saying? Don't you dare invite those heretics into your congregation. Don't you dare say all are welcome. Because if you bring a Jehovah Witness into your church building, and people say, have a good day, you're great. Oh, he's such a good man. You just violated John, and John says you could lose a reward. Mm. Think about that. Think about bringing a Catholic that will damn someone's soul into your church. That's extra. You don't need to pay for that. Those people don't belong in the church. You need to go to their house. You need to go into public and tell them about Jesus. Go into the world and preach the gospel. Then say bring them to the church house. And they don't like that. That's perfectly fine. That's Bible. God will protect me. You're in trouble. But there it is. Chapter 15, verse 3. You want to pick on the Jehovah Witness? Have fun like I do? There it is. Uh, Revelation 17, 14. I, you know, people say I'm rude and cruel with these religions. I'm only using the Bible. Revelation 17, 14. Coming around the stretch. These shall make war with the Lamb. Oh, come on. Should I stop now or what? The Jehovah Witnesses don't believe in going to the army because thou shalt not kill. They're making a war with the Lamb. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm coming back on horseback to be in, in a war, Joel chapter 2, that I'm going to be stabbed and, and knifed, but I won't die, I won't fall. But The Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is the Lord, capital L, John chapter 1, and Lord, and King, capital K, of kings. That's the Lamb we've been talking about. That's behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. 19, 7. 19, 7. I can't get that page open. There it is. 19.7 Let us be glad All right. and rejoice and give honor to him 
For the marriage of the Lamb, capital L, has come, and his wife, that's us, has made herself ready. We're going to marry Jesus the Lamb one day. That's coming. The bride of Christ will marry. So the Lamb is the groom. There's a bride. It's the church. All right, we're not done looking. We've got a few more scriptures. But the Lamb is Jesus. Revelation 21, verse 9. Revelation 21, verse 9. At the end of the verse, I will show you thee the bride, the Lamb, capital L, wife. That's the church. The Lamb has a bride. Now, have you ever... Well, wait a minute. Uh, this is 220. I was going to say, have you ever been invited to a lamb marriage? But there's probably someone out there who's, who's married lambs. And they, they, they divided the whole farmyard so the lamb and the lamb could marry and all that. And people are creepy. But the capital L has a wife. Typically, lambs don't have wives. But the Bible one does. Verse 14, same chapter. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in the, then the names of the twelve apostles of the capital L land. Gee, I wonder who that is. Somebody has apostles. Verse 22. And I saw no temple therein. And the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So this Lamb is the Lord God Almighty. And you don't need a temple Baptist church. I didn't say that. Yes, I did. 23. The city had no need of a sun, neither of moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb, capital L, is the light thereof. Who said I am the light? Uh -huh, there it is. That Lamb is Jesus. Chapter 22, verse 1. And show me a pure river, the water of life. Jesus said, I'm the water of life. Clear as Christian, proceed now the throne of God and of the Lamb. The Lamb's got a throne. Last verse, verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servant shall serve him. There it is. There is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That Lamb is Jesus Christ. That Lamb has a bride. That Lamb has nothing to do with Jehovah Witnesses. That Lamb was to be a sacrifice in the Old Testament. That Lamb in the Old Testament is to have no blemish, no spots. Peter says, Jesus Christ fulfilled that 100%. Lord God the Father, I just thank you for being that Lamb. I thank you, Lord God, I don't need to bring any animals. Lord God, I'm thankful I don't have to go through the whole law to find out what I've done wrong and what I need to bring. I'm thankful, Lord God, I just need to come to Calvary. I need to confess my sins and you're faithful enough and just enough to cleanse me and forgive me of all unrighteousness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.